Hi, my name is Mark Burnett, and I'm a monetary economist. In this video, I want to talk about the Russian real estate bubble and why the Russian economy is teetering on collapse, and it is connected to real estate. First, I want to talk about the attitudes, then the income, then the affordability. Then I want to talk about a little bit of a comparison to the U.S., although they're a little bit different markets. And what is toxic in the Russian real estate market now? Because you always have to have a toxic element. So the first thing I want to talk about is the attitude. In the U.S., I have real estate, like a homestead, and you know I've got 401k, IRA. I've got all these things in a diversified uh, basket of assets. And that's what most people have in the U.S., and I hold them, you know, dollar denominated. In Russia, the, the currency I've told you is not a real currency. It's more like an internal voucher, which doesn't have a real value. It doesn't retain its value. And it's not like history repeats itself. Yeah, I was in Russia in the 90s when, when the ruble was collapsing. I know about this. And my grandparents were there when the last ruble collapsed. And the time before that, the Russian ruble is always collapsing. So Russians, you can look it up on Google Scholar, and Eastern Europeans really do not... They do not have as much trust in these liquid, abstract assets because they know their currency can't hold this value. It just doesn't, and it's artificial. I mean, so what they do is they put their money in tangible assets. So everybody's, well, gold, gold, you know. Yeah, like an average Russian can go buy a bag of gold and bury it in their backyard. Russia may have gold, you know, but it's not accessible to the average Russian. That's all controlled by the elite. So what the average Russian does is they invest in real estate. That's the only thing you can trust in a collapse. It's not like there's more real estate being created in the world. There is a finite amount of real estate, finite supply. That's where they put their money. And it's been soaring. It's been booming. Not for reasons like in the U.S. where our incomes are going up and the average household income is over $70,000 a year. I mean, in Russia, I've talked to Numbrio data shows that they're earning like 500 something dollars a month disposable after taxes. It's going up because of the fear factor. They're, they know this currency is about to collapse. It's like rats fleeing a, sh a ship. They just know it or animals running on some uh, natural disaster about to happen in the forest and the humans are going like, what's happening? Everything looks great to me. They're throwing it in on animal instinct into real estate. The net result is the affordability is not. In Moscow, you've got affordability of 18.2 price to income ratio. Do you know how insanely high that is? Do you know how toxic that is? You say, oh, that's Moscow. First of all, not everybody in Moscow can afford it. If you ever fly over Moscow, it's like a, it's like in the middle of a jungle or middle of a forest. And then there's a few skyscrapers and then it's all blocks. And Moscow, that's, you know, I always tell you, look at the mode, not just the statistical average because things are so skewed. And the mode in Russia is between 16, 17, and 18, price to income ratio. That means I'm talking not just Moscow, but Kazan, Kaliningrad, St. Petersburg, and a lot of this, but those are all nice cities, but there's a, a score of other cities where the mode is hovering around 17, 18, 16. You know, if you put a scatter chart diagram, that's the price to income. So you say, so what? It's, you know, it's expensive all over. I don't know. In the United States, it's about between 3 and 4% uh, the price to income ratio. You can go in Tallahassee, Pensacola, Florida, beautiful places on the Gulf. You've got a pretty close to 1.92, 2 point something. In my town, right on the beach on the Atlantic Ocean, I'm a little bit off the beach, but that's because I'm an organic grower, hipster, you know, kind of hippie. The price to income ratio is like, topping 3.4 price to income compared to Russia. Let's say it's 17. Let's, let's give them a little slack and say it's 17. Do you know how high that is, how toxic that real estate is? Everybody's putting it in there because of the fear factor. People are saying, wow, the U.S. is toxic. The U.S., the U.S. No, those are just YouTubers, okay? Let me explain something. Average credit card debt in the United States, it might be like 7,000 and... That's in relation to income. You always have to have debt to income where the income is over 70000 per household. And like I've told you, Numbrio, I can't do the annualization in my head because it uh, doesn't equate apples to oranges. They're stating 500 and something is the average disposable income for, per month in Russia. 
That's insane. Lee Lowe. And what is their personal credit? Again, I can only infer this through people in Russia using cool Linux, amnesic, anonymous Linux, like Kali. Okay, you know, but there's other ones better than that. Karachi Linux. And what they're telling me is the average household, don't quote me because I don't have the full statistics, nothing coming out of Russia except this personal experience. We're talking one, two, even more than $2,000 on credit cards now. If they have an income of 500 something and they have credit card debt of, you know, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, they're telling me. That's 500 a month disposable and they still have to pay for things. You just can't compare the United States, small little bit of debt here compared to our income with income and debt on par. And that's personal credit card debt. Mortgage affordability in Russia, I don't want to blow you away with statistics, is like 0.234. In America, it's 2.34 or something. It's like 10 times more. Okay, again, I use data that's off of Numbrio, but my own calculations, and it's on a spectrum. I should put some graphs up. So you can buy a, a flat in a city in Russia for, you know, or a house. You're talking between four and $650 per square feet. In my town, where I'm at the beach, surfing three days out of five, then on the weekend doing road trips to, you know, amusement parks in Orlando, it's more like $234, I believe it is, per square feet. So where do you get off where Russia, it's like super toxic air, there's nothing about the environment, and on Florida, at a beach, it's super clean air, low traffic, they've got high traffic. How can you compare these qualities of life? It's just so different. And yet, the real estate keeps on going up because they know that it's going to collapse the entire system. Everybody's putting every penny they can into real estate, and the data shows it, and the data supports it. Anybody wants to argue with me and, and that whataboutism, you know, I've got data to show it. Just say 18% price to income ratio in, in Russia, three in the U.S., there's a lot of whataboutisms going on there. I'm even on chess, on, on Lee Chess or something. Sometimes the, a lot of Russian guys, they, they put the peace flag, the blue-white peace flag or no flag. But then there's some that still fly that Russian flag. And I ask them how things going. And, you know, they proudly state that things are going great economically in Russia. They love to say that. And then I'll say something like, it's not true, but I'll say, yeah, I'm making about 10,000 USD a month. They'll just totally, you know, be... They'll just go berserk over that because they're making $500 a month or something. So there's no comparison when people make statements that we have a bubble in the West compared to the bubble in Russia. Because the bubble in Russia is pure credit and is credit upon credit and is not coming out the data and is personal loan credit. Interest rates are between 16 and 20% now and in Russia, which is insane. They can't pay the they can't pay the interest rates on this. The affordability is very low. I think I saw an official statistics at 95% home or 94% home ownership in Russia. That's an official statistic. The reality is it's probably like, you know, 30% or something. And the uh, rent ratio is out of control also. I don't know how to describe it more passionately other than there's a real estate bubble and what is toxic is something that we're going to talk about now. In 2008, what was toxic? Prices. It's always, always about prices. The prices in 2008 were mortgage backs that were mispriced by people who had poor judgment or didn't care about judgment. In Russia, everything's mispriced because they have this toxic thing called, we'll call it despotism, dictatorship, and, you know, geopolitical conflict. Those never end well. Dictators can stay in power for a while but as soon as they start these geopolitical conflicts, they go down. So that's what's toxic and distorts every single price in Russia. The ruble is not real, and it has a systemic effect across all of Russia. The price to inco income ratio, again, I'm just going to drill it home, is 17, 18% in Russia. And in my town and in parts of Florida, it's two or three. I think like Winston-Salem, 
the Triad area, Greenpoint, uh, Greensboro, High Point, Winston-Salem, Wake Forest University, beautiful campus and magnolia trees. You can go to the Appalachian Mountains. Maybe it's four, the price to income ratio. The price to income ratio in San Francisco, over the top, everybody's whining and complaining. You can check Numbrio. I think it's like over the top, I think it's like 14. Okay, maybe it's 15. But it's nowhere near, you know, Kaliningrad. Oh my goodness. You ever been to Kaliningrad? What a dump that is. And uh, it's it just no comparison. So this economic bubble, this real estate bubble, this is is very real in Russia. The Russians don't know what to do. They're taking personal credit on credit cards in order and these personal loans, revolving credit in order to pay their monthly bills. And with rates high, they can't do it. This system is about to collapse. I mean, they can't just get a field like this in Russia. It costs too much. They don't have the income. It's a different system than in the West. It's going to be the biggest collapse uh, in economic history. And there's a real estate bubble in Russia. My, nar my name is Mark Bernat, reporting from Eastern Europe. Have a great day. Thank you very much.